speed, comfort, or practicality. I asked you guys in the community tab which one you thought the most important of these three features were in a commuter bike and 47% of you responded that it was practicality. But what makes a commuter bike practical? I've narrowed it down to a few key features, seven to be specific. Now you don't need to have every single one of these features on your bike to make it into a good commuter, but the more you have, the more practical the bike is going to be to ride. Okay, the first great feature on a commuter bike is an internal gear hub. The advantage of internal gear hubs compared to rear derailleurs is that they're very low maintenance, if any at all. All the gears are contained inside the rear hub of the bicycle and not only are they low maintenance, but they're also very reliable. There's an initial investment to be made because they're typically more expensive than bikes with derailleurs. My wife's bike, as well as my folding bike, have internal gear hubs and I never have to worry about them. On the other hand, my Merida Speeder, my main commuter and my longtime commuter has a rear derailleur and it needs constant gear adjustment as shifting becomes poor and imprecise over time. And then the second thing is fenders. This is kind of a no-brainer, especially for someone who doesn't live in a completely dry climate. Fenders protect you from getting wet and muddy and a good set of fenders protects your feet, your torso and your back. And I only realized how much difference they made when I used my folding bike in the rain for the first time. Technically speaking, it does have fenders, but they're so bad and the rear one is so short that it's completely useless. The third thing is a rear rack. When I was young, I used to think that my bike's rack was to carry my brothers around. You sit on that rack, you keep your feet apart, away from the spokes and off you go. Now, it turns out I was only half right. Once I started bike commuting, I soon realized that they were so useful for another purpose as well. You can put things on them directly or you can use panniers or a basket to bring your gear with you. They're so useful, especially when the weather gets hot. It doesn't matter how much ventilation a backpack can offer you. If you carry a backpack, it is going to press against your back and it blocks air circulation. Not to mention that carrying extra weight on your back also puts some unnecessary pressure on your hands and on your butt. The fourth thing is a carbon belt drive. Now, I don't personally own a bike with a carbon belt drive, but I rode one that had it and it's so good. Pedaling is smooth, it's completely quiet, and the belt lasts longer than a chain and it requires no maintenance at all, no cleaning, no lubing. It doesn't get your legs or your clothes greasy because it doesn't use any chain oil. A chain needs constant care, especially in bad weather, and it can easily end up rusting and it can give this really annoying squeaking noise. This is the one thing that annoys me the most. Fifth thing is a dynamo hub with dynamo operated lights. Running out of light isn't much fun and it has happened to me on more than one occasion. Now thankfully this always happened before dusk and so it never became unsafe to ride the bike but this isn't the only drawback of battery operated lights, even if they are USB rechargeable. Putting them on the bike and taking them off is always something that you have to keep in mind when you lock up your bike outside. Dynamo lights, on the other hand, never run out of battery because they light up as soon as you start riding the bike and since they're attached to your bike, they can't be taken off very easily with a single move either, so you don't need to remove them when you lock your bike outside. My wife's bike has it and it's great. Unfortunately, I couldn't add a dynamo hub to this bicycle, so I was able to get something else instead. This is the real light, which is sort of a dynamo operated light, but it has this magnet here on the spoke. And every time the little magnet passes by the light, it blinks up so it shows my presence to other road users. Now, of course, it isn't sufficient to light up the road ahead of me, and I always use a set of rechargeable lights, but it gives me the peace of mind that if I ever run out of battery, I'm not completely invisible to other road users. Relight also makes 
some other interesting products and one of them is uh, like a dynamo which is attached to your fork and as your wheel is turning it generates enough power that it lights up a little light at the front and one at the back you've got two dynamos one at the front wheel one at the rear wheel and two lights one at the front one at the back it's really nice and well worth checking out the sixth thing is a bell this is kind of a no-brainer I love my bell and I use it all the time unfortunately I haven't found a good spot to mount it on this bike I have to kind of reach in uh, because of the the way the brake and the shifters are and also on my other bike there is not a perfect spot the perfect spot would be like reachable with your thumb but it's still a very gentle and a very effective way of letting people know that you're coming now before I give you the seventh feature if you like this kind of content or if you find it useful or helpful then give it a thumbs up so it can spread to other people as well and after this seventh feature I still have one bonus point to give you so the seventh thing is tires with reflective sidewalls as a general rule of thumb at least for me the more visible I am the better and I cannot ever be too visible your lights take care of your front and your rear visibility but there is no direct source of light when it comes to being visible from the side so you need to use passive lights so when a car comes or some other motorbike comes from the side everything that can bounce light back from the side is a welcome feature commuter tires often come with reflective sidewalls and extra puncture protection which is really good and it makes them really practical I'm going to put a link in the description where I compare some of the best commuter tires after several months of testing so here is my bonus feature to you as an urban commuter or as a city commuter bike theft unfortunately is a real problem in many cities and leaving your bike outside may not always be practical and safe I realized this when I had to go to the city once and I had to go to a shop where I couldn't lock up my bike close enough to the building that I had to enter so suddenly a folding bike made sense but the problem with most folding bikes is that they cannot be carried or wheeled too easily and they don't fold too small to be practical to carry around Bromptons on the other hand are very small and they can be carried very easily the problem is that they're quite expensive so I decided to purchase a Brompton clone to see what quality I could get for less than the original and have the same portability there are a lot of things that I love about the bike and there are some things that I really find annoying it may be the perfect bicycle for some people but you can decide whether or not it's worth your money after watching my shopping experience video and first impression video up here or my long-term review of the bike down here see you there